Hello buddies, in this video I will be discussing NFV that is Network Function Virtualization. Before I begin, let me tell you certain facts about modern networking era. Maybe uh, you all must be aware of it and you can instead of a Google, you will get list of facts about networking. So let me tell you and you people have to correctly pay attention over the figures I will be mentioning here. So internet is controlled by 75 million servers. About 1 billion computer systems are connected to internet. About 3.2 billion people use the internet from which 1.7 billion internet users are Asians. According to Google, internet consists of 5 million terabytes of data. If the internet goes down for a day, approximately 200 billion emails and 3 billion Google search would have to wait. 30,000 websites are hacked every day. And this goes on, goes on, goes on. These are the certain facts about modern networking era. How this modern networking or modern era of networking is getting supported? Basically, two technologies are playing a very important role. One is NFP, that is network function virtualization, and second is software defining software defined networking. So, in this particular video, I will be discussing NFP in detail. So, as the title suggests, that is Network Function Virtualization Concepts and Architecture. So, let's begin our journey discussing this thing. So, this is the index I will be discussing uh, five points that is, background and motivation for the NFE, virtual machine, NFE concepts, benefits and requirement, and reference architecture. So, let's start our journey of discussing network function virtualization. I will start from the basic and we will make sure that people should get the clear understanding without having any prior knowledge about certain technologies. So let's begin. So the first thing is like okay, how this NFV came to the market. So NFV originated from the discussion among major network operators and carriers about how to improve the network operation in the high volume multimedia era. This discussion resulted in the publication of the original NFV white paper. I have mentioned it here. This is the title of that particular white paper or research paper you can say. The, in this paper, the group listed as the overall objective of NFV is leveraging standard IT virtualization technology to consolidate many network equipment types onto industry standard high volume servers, switches and storage which could be located in data center, network nodes and in end user premises. In simple way I can relate or I can explain you like this, like in the concept of using virtualization, these people are actually supporting modern networking era. How they will do it and how they are going to do it, I will explain you in the few like in, in the coming slides. So networks include a large and net and growing variety of proprietary hardware appliances. But using hardware, there are certain negative consequences. If you use hardware equipments to actually support today's requirement of network, so there are there are certain consequences. You can say negative one. So let me, let's list it down. That is first is require additional different types of hardware appliances. Second, finding the space and power to accommodate. Third, new hardware means additional capital expenditure. People have to spend it more, and you should also have certain skill necessary to design, integrate, and operate increasingly complex hardware. So the NFV approach moves away from dependence on variety of hardware platform to the use of small number of standardized platform types with virtualization techniques used to provide the needed network functionality. So basically NFV is to the rescue. So before we proceed we should also understand the concept of virtual machine. You people are, must be aware of it but let me put certain lights on it. So traditionally applications have run directly on an operating system or on a personal computer or on a server. Each PC or server would run only one OS at a time as you all know. Therefore, application vendors had to rewrite parts of an application for each OS platform. You will are aware that basically every provider or any every application vendor or provider writes software for different different platforms which increase the likelihood of defects, increase quality testing efforts and usually led to increased prices. One effective strategy for dealing with this problem is known as hardware virtualization. Virtualization technology enables a single PC or a server to simultaneously run multiple operating systems or multiple sessions of a single OS. A machine 
Running virtual Azure software can host numerous applications, including those that run on different OS on a single hardware platform. So in simple way, I have put here that hardware virtualization is nothing but the use of software to partition a computer resources into separate and isolated entities called virtual machines. What are the virtual machines? That is one instance of an OS along with one or more applications running in an isolated partition within the computer. Virtual machine is not a new technology. During the 1970s, IBM mainframe system offered the first capability that would allow programs to use only a portion of a system resources. Before we begin, before we proceed, we should also discuss that how this particular virtualization thing works and how we can enable virtualization in our system. So basically, the concept of virtual machine monitor comes into the picture. The solution that enables virtualization is virtual machine monitor (VMM). Or commonly known today as a hypervisor. This software sits between the hardware and the virtual machines acting as a resource broker. Simply put, the hypervisor allows the multiple virtual machines to safely coexist on a single physical server host and share those host resources. So the number of guests that can exist on a single host is, is a measure as a consolidation ratio. For example, a host that is supporting six virtual machines is said to have a consolidation ratio of 6 to 1. Commercial hypervisors basically in the market are available from companies we must be aware you have must have heard about these companies also that is commercial hypervisors offering by companies such as VMware and Microsoft are widely used with millions of copies having been sold. A key aspect of server virtualization is that in addition to the capability of running multiple virtual machines on one machine, virtual machine can be viewed as network resources. Here the concept comes of NFV. Server virtualization masks server resources including the number and identity of individual physical servers, processor and operating system from server user. This makes it possible to partition a single host into multiple independent servers conserving hardware resources. It also makes it possible to quickly migrate a server from one machine to another for load balancing or for dynamic switchover in the case of machine failure. There are two types of hypervisor as depicted in this particular figure. There are two types. A type 1 hypervisor here is loaded as a theme software layer directly into the physical server. As you all can see here, directly sits on the hardware that is bare metal. Once it is installed and configured, usually within a matter of a minutes, the server can then support virtual machine as a guest. As we can see here, then virtual machine we can install here with different different operating system, and when on operating system we can run different different applications. Then this idea that the hypervisor is loaded onto the bare metal of a server is usually a difficult concept for people to understand. They are more comfortable with the solution that work as a traditional application. Program code that is loaded on the top of Microsoft Windows or Unix or Linux operating system environment. In type 2 basically the virtual machine monitor or hypervisor sits on the top of the operating systems. So this is exactly how type 2 hypervisor is deployed. Some example of type 2 hypervisor are VMware Workstation and Oracle VM Virtual Box. A type 1 hypervisor is deployed on the physical host and can directly control the physical resources of that host. Whereas type 2 hypervisor has an operating system between itself and those resources and relies on the operating system to handle all the hardware interaction on the hypervisor behalf. Typically type 1 hypervisor perform better than type 2 because type 1 hypervisor do not have that extra layer here in the case of type 2 there is an extra layer because the type 1 hypervisor doesn't compete for the resources with an operating system there are more resources available on the host so this is a small comparison i have mentioned here in of the type 1 and type 2 hypervisor one more concept is important to understand in virtualization field that is container virtualization let me show you the diagram first in this approach software known as a virtualization container as you can see a container 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 again okay, runs on the top of the host operating system kernel and provides an execution environment for the application so basically if you install the container you can run the application within that container so container do not aim to emulate the physical server so irrespective of any hardware platform you can 
make sure you can deploy this particular container and run application on it. So this is also concept of virtualization. So let's proceed to our main concept and the main focus that is NFV, that is network function virtualization. So simple definition is given in a single statement here that virtualization of network functions by implementing this function in software and running them on virtual machine. Uh, you will not get it at first, but let me explain it with this particular example. See, if we have got machines or hardware technologies or network hardware technologies for a particular functionality like one device for error control, second device for flow control, third device for access control, multiplexing and deep multiplexing and encryption decryption. So you will have five hardware physical machine. Instead of having five hardware machine, what you can do, you can create virtual machines and in that virtual machine, you can implement all this functionality in it. So basically in single machine, all this five virtual machine will run and this is how the efficiency and effectiveness of the modern networking era will get supported using NFV. So virtualization of network function by implementing this function in software and running them on the VMs. NFV decouples network function such as let me now uh, give you the more complex functions which is getting used in the, in the modern networking era that is net that, that is network address translation firewalling intrusion detection domain name services and caching from proprietary hardware appliances so that they can run in software of virtual machines nfv builds on standard virtual machine technologies extending their use into the networking domain so technology can be applied to network based devices this three network devices it can get supported so first is network function devices such as switches routers network access point customer premises equipment and second is network related compute device okay such as firewall intrusion detection system and network management system third is network attached storage that is file and database servers attached to the network so all this functionality or all these devices or all these compute devices or you can say all storage thing you can actually ship to virtual machine they, and virtual machine can deploy on the network and act efficiency and effectiveness will be getting achieved in traditional network all devices are deployed on proprietary closed platform all network elements are enclosed in the boxes and hardware which is cannot be shared so with nfv however network elements are independent of the application that are flexibly deployed on unified platform comprising standard servers storage devices and switches so picture will get more clear if you can see this particular diagram so basically on the left hand side this is traditional network application deployment here we have got the list of devices for a different different functionality purpose but all this thing can actually get shifted in the virtual machine point as you all can see and this particular functionality can actually exist on a single machine so by broad consensus the network function virtualization that is ISD industry standard group has created this part of the European Telecommunication Standard Institute ETSI has the lead and indeed almost the sole role in creating the NFV standard so this is how they have planned of developing the NFV technologies let's move ahead with a simple example of the use of NFV in the first example you, as you can see here in this graph that is graph representation of an end-to-end -end device if this is one device and this is one device they want to communicate okay so basically you can have certain network function in between so all this network function is getting deployed on the physical infrastructure and this is the actually physical connection but when they actually communicate this is the logical connection is getting established but this is the end-to-end -end network device they have explained but using nfv you have to see here you have to look down here so let me explain you once again what what about the part a that is part a figure 7.6 highlights the network function that are relevant to the service provider and the customer the interconnection among the network functions and endpoints are depicted by the dash lines representing logical links part b of the figure 7.6 illustrates a virtualized network service configuration that could be implemented on the physical configuration of part of the figure 7.6 vnf1 provides a network access for endpoint as you can see here vnf that is virtual network function so this particular function is getting actually deployed in this particular physical machine and it comes into the picture whenever this particular endpoint wants to communicate with this endpoint so basically this particular function 
acting as a gateway for this particular endpoint and this vertical virtual network work function 3 is acting as a gateway for this particular endpoint and here also we can see there are multiple virtual network functions coming to the picture from the physical machines and they are forming a graph this particular thing can actually implement it for different functionality this for different functionality this for different version all this thing together actually working and this particular two endpoints are able to communicate so this is how the nfv concept works this is a simple example of it let's begin let's proceed sorry that is nfv principle three key nfv principles are involved creating practical network services the first is service chaining means virtual network functions you just have to understand virtual network function is nothing but a virtual machine which imp with implemented function with network function so virtual network functions are modular and each vnf provides limited functionality on its own for a given traffic flow within a given application the service provider shares the flow through multiple virtual network functions to achieve the desired network functionality so basically is in this diagram you can understand Okay, basically this particular point and point asks for certain functionality then VNF one comes into the picture and this particular module then provide the service to this module then this, this module provides provide service to this module every, every module has been designed or implemented for different, different functions. functions so, so this, this is what was service chain this, this is the important principle of the uh, NFP principle. principle second is management and orchestration short form is manual this involves deploying and managing the life cycle of virtual network function VNF Instances. Example include VNF instance creation, VNF service chaining, monitoring, relocation, shutdown, and building. So basically, using this model, you have to implement this model to bring out the automation. One can understand, one can actually say like that an orchestration. So you can do the service chaining, monitoring, relocation, shutdown, and building. All the things, all the functions can be actually achieved by using this particular model. This is one of the principle of NFP. And the third. That, that is distributed architecture. A VNF may be made up of one or more VNF components, each of which implement a subset of VNF functionality. And this functionality is deployed not only on a single machine, but this functionality is actually distributed among the different instances. So this is what we call distributed architecture. So these are the three important principles of NFP. Let's discuss the high-level NFP framework. This is a very simple diagram to understand here. So there are three models as you can see here. First is virtualized network functions. Okay, the collection of VNFs implemented in software that run over the network function virtualization infrastructure. So this is the physical support, and on this particular physical virtual machines are actually existing with different 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 network functionality. Second model is NFV infrastructure. The NFV I performs a virtualization function on the three main categories of devices in the network service environment that is computer devices, storage devices and network devices. So here we have got three types of devices mainly. And the third model is NFV management and orchestration. As we have discussed before, this encompasses the orchestration and lifecycle management of the physical software resources that support the infrastructure virtualization and the lifecycle management of the VNF. The how the virtual machine will get created, how the function it will will get achieved and how the resources will get located allocated you know, from the resource pool. So all this thing can be actually managed by this particular model. So this is what we call high level NFV framework. Let's next point is NFV benefits and the requirement. So NFV benefits, if NFV is implemented efficiently and effectively, it can actually provide a number of benefits. I will highlight the two most important benefits which NFV provide that is reduce capex and reduce opex. So the full form is like this: that is capital expenditure. What do you mean by capital expenditure? Is like a business expense incurred to create future benefit. A capital expenditure is incurred when a business spends money either to buy fixed assets or to add the value of an existing asset with a useful life that extends beyond tax year. So this particular expenditure will get reduced. What do you mean by OPEX is operational expenditure, refers to the business expenses incurred in the course of ordinary businesses such as maintenance and operation of the equipment. So using NFP technologies, all the maintenance costs and operation costs will get reduced. So things will become very easy for us, that ease of interoperability because of standardized and open interfaces, use of single platform for different applications, user and tenants, provided agility and flexibility by quickly scaling up 
or down the service to address changing demand. So one can actually understand when we deploy a virtual machine and we can actually increase the virtual machine, the demand is getting increased. And when there is no demand, we can actually delete or shut down the virtual machine. And again, putting it on whenever the requirement or demand getting increases. Next thing we have to set is that is NFA requirement. So there are actually nine requirements. So first thing is portability or interoperability. The capability to load and execute VNF provided by different vendors on a variety of standardized hardware platforms. This is the case. Like all the NFV we design, it should be portable and all the NFV should work together. That is interoperability. Second is performance trade-off. Because the NFV approach is based on industry standard hardware, that is avoiding any proprietary hardware such as acceleration engines. You have to avoid proprietary hardware because they don't allow us to customize the hardware. So performance will definitely uh, go on. Third is migration and coexistence with respect to legacy equipment. So NFV architecture must support a migration path from today's proprietary physical network appliance based solution to more open standard based virtual network appliance solution. So you will be able to migrate your legacy systems to the newly or modern networking era. Fourth, management and orchestration. We need a consistent management and orchestration architecture for managing whole working of NFV. Fifth, automation. NFV will scale only if all the functions can be automated. Sixth, security and resilience. The security, resilience and availability of the network should not be impaired when VNFs are introduced. So whenever you launch new VNF into the uh, system or, or in the network, so other VNFs should not get affected by it or security has to be maintained there. Network stability. Ensuring stability of the network is not impacted when managing and orchestrating a large number of virtual appliances between different hardware vendors and hypervisor. Eighth, that is simplicity. Ensuring that virtual network platform will be simpler to operate. Means things should not get complicated when we are learning this complex technology. It should be very easy to operate or, or we, it should be very easy to play with all these things. Nine, and the final final requirement of NFV that is integration. Network operators need to be able to mix and match servers from different vendors, hypervisor from different vendors and virtual appliances from different vendors without incurring significant integration. Basically all the technologies or you can say heterogeneous technology should come together and they should actually support each other. Then only this NFV can actually be a successful. Next thing is NFV reference architecture at the final diagram of the session. That is, it provides a high level view of the NFV framework. So let me make you understand then what this thing talks about. So basically there are four models here. One is NFPI. Before also we discuss this thing, that is network function virtualization infrastructure. Comprises of what? Hardware and software resources that create the environment in which Virtual network functions, this here you all can see, virtual network functions are deployed. NFVI virtualizes, virtualizes physical computing, storage and networking and places them into the resource pool here. Second is VNF and EMS. The collection of VNF implemented in the software to run on virtual computing, storage and network resources together with the collection of element management system. So every element management system will control this particular VNF, as you all can see here. So this is the first and this is the second model. Third, NFV management and orchestration. You are here. Again, you can relate this diagram with the previous diagram. Previous diagram was much simpler to understand, but this is complex reference architecture. One can actually frame like this. So NFV management and orchestration, that is MANU, framework for management and orchestration of the all the resources available here in the NFV environment. This includes computing, networking, storage and virtual machine resources. So all this particular task has been, will be controlled by this particular model. And the last thing is like OSS and DSS. That is operational and business support system. Here the, where the client sit or you people sit, where the user interface actually sit. Implemented by the VNF service provider. So here you people can actually interact with it. So this is the thing. This is the introduction about the whole NF field. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is the reference I have taken. That is Foundation of Modern Networking by William Salins. So if you have any doubts, please mention in comment. I will definitely respond to it. Thank you. Thank you so much.